Easter message. It's Easter week. I was just talking. We actually got a few in the congregation tonight that come and sung for us. And thank God, I almost feel selfish being here and getting to listen to this and other people not. But I sure needed it. It was food. But uh, Thursday night, Easter week, Jesus was having a hard time. He was beat, abused, uh, everything he went through, and he done it for hard times like this for us. But uh, I'll tell you how I got my message. It's pretty interesting. Tuesday morning I woke up, and I had a fellow on my mind I hadn't called in a while, and I dialed his number. And when he answered, he started laughing because I hadn't called him in a while. And I said, I looked at, thought about your number, and I didn't know if God was giving me a Bible verse or your telephone number. And after we talked a while, I began to think about his telephone number, and I looked, and the book of Isaiah come to my mind. And part of the last four numbers in his telephone are 5605. And God told me to go to Isaiah 56, verse number 5. I had no idea what the verse was. And I began to read, and God uh, God gave me this message tonight. But we're going to pray. We're not going to talk about anything that's going on in the world. We're going to talk about Jesus tonight. Lord, we love you. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you, Lord, for the singing, God, that we've already heard. And, Lord, I pray over, uh, God, the congregation that can't be here, Lord, as uh, this will be celebrated Easter morning, your resurrection. Thank you, God, so much, uh, Lord, for your resurrection and your power. And, Lord, I pray that this will help people. God, help us to know that you're alive. Help us to know that you're, you're here for us and you love us. And, Lord, we feel your love to not feel your presence. So thankful for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The book of Isaiah, chapter number 56. Listen to what the Bible says, verse number 5. It says, even unto them. I want you to think about that for a minute. Even unto them. I read those words and I knew I was in the right place. Even unto them will I give in mine house. And within my walls a place, and listen, and a name better than the sons and of the daughters. And I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Also, the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord and be his servants. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant now listen even them if you're out there in your car or in here in the church i want you to think about that for a minute even them say it out loud wherever you're at when you hear even them will i bring into my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer listen to this their burnt offering and their sacrifice shall be accepted unto mine altar and mine house shall be called the house of prayer for all people when I read this, I began to think about that statement, even them, even them. And, and sometimes we look at people and we look out in the world and, and we might say even them, even them we look and we might even say our neighbors, but I can't say that tonight. I can't look around and say even them because thank God I'm part of that even them crowd. I was one of the ones that when people looked and saw me, uh, that's what they thought. They said even them or even him or even her or even you or whoever you are tonight. Even you, amen, God done all this for. But I want you to listen to some things. Thanks to Calvary. Thanks to the cross. Thanks to what we're celebrating this week. Thanks to Sunday morning. I hope at 7 a.m. this goes out. Thanks to what happened on a daylight on a Sunday morning when Jesus walked out of the grave. Even them were included in this. Now listen. Even them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place. Point number one is we've got a place. I'm glad because I never really fit in. I fit in a little bit with this crowd and a little bit with that crowd, and I could fit in with anybody I wanted to, but I never had a place. But thank God when I got saved, when that Spirit came in my life, all of a sudden I fit in, I had a place. And see, He's not just talking about a place in heaven. He's not just talking about a place when we die, but He's talking about a place, amen, that we fit in with Him. And listen to where we fit in. We fit in. I'm just going to come on out here for a minute. Hadn't got to do it in a while. We fit in in a place where there's walls in his house. And I begin to think about that. And we fit in in his salvation, amen. His salvation has walls, it has a house. And thank God I'm glad tonight that we fit in somewhere that I have a place tonight that I do fit in. 
I fit in here, amen. I fit in uh, in the car when I listen to the singing. I fit in, amen, on the altar. I fit in at the kitchen table with my family. I found me a place to not, amen. It's all because of on that third day when Jesus come out of that tomb, amen. I celebrate the resurrection of Jesus to not. Joe, I'm glad, praise God, that He come out and He give me a place, amen. Amen, it feels good. To, I feel like I've been chained to this thing for four weeks, praise the Lord. Amen. I just needed somebody to come out to for a minute. Amen. And listen, He gave us a place. And listen to what else He gave us. He gave us a better name. And listen to this, than the sons and the daughters. The sons and the daughters, He's talking about giving us a better name than the ones with the old covenant. The better name than, than Israel had back in the old covenant. When he gave it, How does He do that? See, when He died on the cross, we stepped into a new covenant. The Bible says a better covenant thanks to what happened on this morning when you're listening, when you wake up and you're celebrating and you walk outside and you say, Happy Easter, amen. I say, Happy Easter today because I have a better name. Amen. My name wasn't much. It wasn't good. But when I got saved, I got a new name, a better name. Amen. It's not just a name here, but it's a name there. See, my name is wrote in the Lamb's book of life. Listen to this right here, what the Bible says. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Now, when we get saved, we get a new name. It won't be uh, Kelly Prophet. It won't be Doug Jones. It won't be Jim Watson. Uh, it'll, it'll be a new name. We don't know what it is. Uh, it, it'll be because of Jesus Christ. We know why. But because of that new covenant, you will have a, a new name. You know why? Because if we had the same old name and we got to heaven with the same old name and I was the same old person, I would pollute heaven. I would corrupt heaven. I would mess heaven up. But when I get there, I get a brand new name. Thank God. And He made that covenant. And it cannot be took away. Listen to this right here. What the end of this verse says. Hallelujah. Are you glad to be here tonight? Amen. Me too. That shall not be cut off. My new name comes with security. See, my daddy gave me a name. He gave me a good name. Earl Prophet was his name, and he passed that name Prophet on down to me. I passed it to my girls, and it'll change one day. They can keep part of it, and, and, and the prophet name will go on and on and go back through the ages. But one of these days, that's just going to be a name that's wrote on a piece of cold stone. Somewhere out in a graveyard like this, it's just going to be wrote there, and it's just going to stay right there. But my new name's going on, but praise God, I've got a security. I've got a security tonight that nothing, the Bible said nothing, uh, death, hell, or nothing can take my name away from me. See, we worry. Right now we're worried we're going to lose things we love. Uh, people out here that's listening to this morning, you're worried that you're going to lose things. You're going to lose homes and you're going to lose jobs and you might lose family members and we worry and we fret and, and I'm, I'm as guilty as anybody that's here tonight. I worry about it. But he said because of that new covenant and what he done when he come out of that grave on that morning, he would give me a name that's wrote down in the glory world, amen, that cannot be touched. Nothing can, what can separate us from the love of God tonight? The Bible said nothing. Hallelujah. So I've got a name that cannot be took away from me, and I'm glad tonight because somebody might want it. Now listen, we'll be done in just a little while. We ought to stay here a while. Also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord, that serve Him and to love the name of the Lord. He gave me something that I never really understood. See, I, I got married when I was 21 years old, 20 years old. And I knew I loved Kelly. I can tell you from the minute that I realized that I loved her. But he gave me a new love. See, when I got saved, I didn't know how to love. I didn't know what love meant. And the older I get and the more I realize uh, that I think about, Doug, and I understand what Jesus done for me on the cross. And then the more I think about it, the more I read it, and the more I realize that, that what He done is the love that's in me today. See, it was His love going, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That's love. And when I think about that, it makes me want to love and it gives me security to love. See, I was afraid to love. I didn't know how to love. I knew if I loved, I might get hurt. But I can love Him with all the security. Amen. 
listen to not listen right here. And to love the name of the Lord. When you say that name, you ought to be able to love and say that. You ought to, when you say the name of Jesus, it ought to change your morning. We ought not wait. Everybody out there ought not wait. There would be people on Easter morning at 11 o'clock. There'd be people in this church that never come to church except on Easter and Christmas. If you're out there this morning, that name of Jesus won't mean much to you. But if you learn to love Him and you learn to love His name and you learn the security and the power and what He done for you, if you understand what He done, if you understand the beating that He took, if you understand how He lived His life and how He come out of that grave on the third morning, you'll learn to love Him and you'll learn to love that name and the power that comes with it. But I want you to listen. To be servants, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant. That's your job. That's the only thing that everybody that's here tonight, there's just a handful of six or eight of us that's here tonight and there'll be a bunch listening and this is the only thing you can do for salvation is take a hold of that new covenant. See, God gave an old covenant in the New Testament, but the new covenant is when He gave His Son and He is the covenant. Jesus is the covenant. His blood made a covenant. And see, your part and your only part is not showing up to church. Your part is not doing good deeds. Your part is not out here in the world. It's accepting His name. It's accepting the sacrifice. Doug, that's all that you can do to be saved. You can't do anything. Works will not save you. You cannot serve God enough to go to heaven, but accepting what He done. Whoever you are out there this morning, and you feel like you're one of them, even them that cannot be saved, you feel like you've done too much or you can't do enough, honey, it's not up to you and what you've done. You've got to accept what He done. That is the only way for salvation. I mean, we can be the best person that we can be in the world, and that will not save us. Even them, amen. I'm glad that I'm even one of them tonight. Even them will I bring into my holy mountain and to make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted. Mine altar for my house shall be called the house of prayer for all people. Now I want you to listen to this. Our part is to accept it. But his part is to be accepted. He's got to accept us. And the only way he could accept us it's through this new covenant. Doug, we would have never got in. The Gentiles, everybody that's listening to this, more than likely, uh, this is not going to make it to Israel. More than likely, uh, the Jewish people are not going to hear this. And if they did, they probably wouldn't accept it on this Sunday morning being Easter. But the ones that do hear this, the ones that do get this, hey, praise the Lord, I've been waiting to hear a baby cry for five weeks, amen. The ones that do hear this, the ones that are out there uh, in the world that feel like they can't get in and you feel like God would not accept you, you. The whole reason is John 3.16 For God so loved the world We could say this a thousand times not That He gave His only begotten Son That whosoever believeth in Him Should not perish But have eternal life Amen That is the promise That the promise That is the covenant Amen You wander and you think This thing is so mysterious It's so big That we can't get in Doug there's no understanding But it's all we got to do Is accept that And God accepts only Jesus that's the only thing He could accept. There's nothing that any of us could do. We could come sing the songs and raise our hands and shed tears and do the best. We've got the best singers in the world, but that will not be accepted. It's only Jesus. And see, this is what's amazing. He's the only man, He's the only one that's ever went into that grave. And on the third day, He decided Himself it was time to get up. On the third day, Joe, He said, I'm coming up out of here. See, other people raised from the dead. Lazarus raised from the dead, but it was because of Jesus. Jesus had to tell him to get up or he couldn't have got up. Jesus laid in that tomb, and when he decided it was time, he opened his eyes. He fulfilled the old covenant, stepped into the new covenant for everybody that's listening to this this morning. 
Even them, even you, whoever you are, if you're in the car going down the road this morning listening uh, early in the morning by yourself wondering what in the world's going on, wondering how you're going to get out of this, wondering if you're going to make it, wondering if you can be saved, wondering if what you've done is too much, wondering if you've crossed the line. You're part of that even them crowd this morning that God died for, that He arose out of the grave for. Now listen. On that week that he took that beating, this very night he was locked up in a prison cell. He was beat and battered. He was smoked through the face. He was spit on. He was cursed. Uh, Joe, they slapped him in the face and said, Prophesy now, O king, who it is that smote thee. He was denied and betrayed by his own men. He was mocked. I was reading this week how when Peter, when Peter denied him, Jesus looked over. And the soldiers immediately begin to laugh and to mock him. And the Lord had never showed me this, but I have to believe in all my heart that when they saw Peter run off, they said, look, that was one of yours. That was one that's walked with you, and look, now he's running away from you. Even him. Honey, even you, even the one that's been saved that's out here and you're out in the world and you're living in sin, even you and even the one that, that you're, you think that there's no way you can't do it. I've been in many prison cells and many jails and, and talked to many people that say this right here, I just cannot do it. That's right, you can't do it. That's why you go into his house and let him do it. That's why he said that he would become our house of prayer. This is a house of worship. Jesus is the house of prayer. He's the one when we enter into his house, he's the one we pray to. He's the one that holds the prayers. He's the one that answers the prayers. Jesus is the house of prayer. And it's all because of what we're celebrating on what now you're hearing is this Sunday morning, Easter morning. I say happy Easter. I hope when you tell somebody this morning, Happy Easter, you can tell them why it's Happy Easter. Because when Mary went to the grave, when she went and she looked in and he was gone, she was alarmed, but it was Happy Easter. When Peter and John, and John outrun him to the grave, and Peter was lagging behind and couldn't go as fast, when he got there, it was Happy Easter. Amen. And when the disciples were out on the, uh, the ocean fishing and they looked and there was the Savior on the bank, it was Happy Easter and it's Happy Easter today. Amen. Amen. And I thank God. I thank God for that new, ca- new covenant. And I thank God that even them. I've got six or eight people in front of me tonight and none of them are perfect. I look over this crowd right here and several of them could have went different ways. Me included. But thank God even them, even them, even me, because, all because of nothing less, nothing less, nothing less of the resurrection morning. You know if I stood up here and I preached about just Jesus dying on the cross for us, and I quit right there, there's been many of a a father and many of a mother that's died for a baby. These people right now that run into a burning house to save a loved one, knowing that they're going to die. we got soldiers that go over to the battlefields and they lay their life down. But see, the difference is, the difference in all these other religions, our Lord come out of the grave on resurrection morning. On what we're celebrating right now, our Lord come out of the grave. He defeated, He conquered death, hell, and the grave. He gave us each one, even you, He gave you eternal life. Even them. So somebody out there this morning, somebody is thinking, not me, not me. i got a friend right now that listens to every message, and he may be thinking, not me. But you, even them. Denise, where there's breath, there's hope. Where there's breath, there can be life. I was one that people said, not him, not him. But now I'm one of them. (laughs) Hallelujah. This morning, celebrate resurrection. Christians, celebrate the resurrection. Celebrate something that no other religion in the world can celebrate. We can celebrate. They're waiting on their God to come out of their grave. Our God's done ascended. And one of these days, He's going to descend. (laughs) This old graveyard out here, it's it's going to blow up. 
Hallelujah. If I could sing, I'd sing, ain't no grave going to hold this body down. Hallelujah. Even them. This morning, wherever you're at, whoever you are, you can be one of them. You can be one of them redeemed. And you know what? When God give me a place, listen, my very first point, and I'm done right here. When God give me a place, He did not make me fit in. You understand? He just made me part of Him. I do fit in here. I do fit in with these people, but God didn't change me to fit in with nobody. He changed me to fit in with Him. See, I don't want to be like no other preacher. I don't want to be like no other singer. I don't want to be like no other person. I want to be me filled with the Spirit of God. Even them. And that's all God wants. Don't look at, the, at nobody and say, I can't be like Him. God don't want you to be like them. He wants you to be even them that believe. Even them that He's going to bring into His holy mountain. Even them that can go into his house of prayer and get through what a powerful tool we get when we're saved. And even them that when that trumpet sounds on our resurrection morning, even them's going to be called out of the grave. I pray this morning, if you're listening wherever you're at, that God will touch your heart. I pray that you understand what it means. The Bible said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Don't complicate it. Just believe it. What you've got to believe is that God gave His only begotten Son for you, whoever you are. You've got to believe that Jesus come out of that grave just for you, for whoever you are. You believe that, you call upon His name and ask you, He'll save you. Find you a church, find you people that you can tell. The Bible said we confess with our mouth. Tell somebody about what happened. Tell us. Get a hold of us. But we love you. We pray that sooner than later we'll be able to get together, but until then we're going to keep on. Our singers have put down some great songs. One said, do what you do, and that's what he did. I prayed the whole time, God, just do what you do, do what you do, and he did. And he always will, and he'll do the same thing for you. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. Thank you so much for tonight. Thank you for your anointing, your grace, your mercy, and thank you, Lord, most of all. God, that that old barred tomb's empty. Lord, that you didn't need it but three days, and God, you come out of it, and it, you'll never be back in it again. And Lord, thank you that one day you're coming back. But Lord, I pray tonight for the ones that hear this, I pray, God, that it'll help them. God, I pray that somehow you can, uh, you can touch your people, encourage them. But God, I pray most of all if one's lost. God, and, and just don't feel like they can be one of them. God, that you'll show them. That you're, they're exactly the one that you died for. Lord, we love you. Thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you for this service. God, our singers, the anointing you put on them. In Jesus' name, amen.